We are joined now by Jessica Rowley and Senator Mike Azinger. For almost a year now, Ms. Rowley has been working to bring public awareness of sexually explicit books in her community's public schools and libraries. Senator Azinger has also championed this cause in the state legislature. I want to welcome you both. Thank, Thank you. you. So before we get started, I want to notify our viewers that we're going to discuss and show some of the books that we were that we found in libraries and schools. And this is adult oriented material that is not suitable for children by typical broadcast standards. So to that point, I want to make it clear that the issue we at West Virginia Statewide News have covered is not targeted at plain text novels or reference materials, nor is it focused at LGBTQ issues. Our media company reviewed the works in question and determined them to be graphically illustrated, sexually explicit works that in our opinion, meet the standard of West Virginia law, making it illegal to display obscene material to a minor. So with all of those disclaimers out of the way, Jessica, could you tell us how this all began? Yes, thank you for having us. Um, so last fall, I walked into the local library here, the Wood County Library, and I went in to make documents or to make copies of documents. And when I walked past the front door, I noticed within 15 feet of the front door was a display entitled Banned Books. And, um, you know, it piqued my interest because these were books that are American Library Association coordinates with libraries across the nation of controversial books. And, um, and so I had uh, several of the books on dis the display piqued my interest. And so um, I checked out the books um, to investigate exactly what was controversial about these books. Um, when I got home that evening, um, I was shocked and horrified at what I saw in the books because as I walked in the library, I wanna also uh, make mention that there were several children walking around the display. And at any point in time, any one of these children um, could have picked up the book, looked at what was in the book, and we're talking very sexually explicit material, which I had no idea um, was inside these books. And that, that's really what got this started. Um, and so I, myself and other concerned citizens, uh, once we educate ourselves on what was inside the, this book, we went to the library board meeting um, the last Wednesday of the month. They have them every month. At the last week of the month, we went to the library board meeting and we talked to the library board members, the library board president, and we we informed them of what was inside the books. Uh, we asked them what their policy was for children in the library, and they stated that children have access to anything inside of the library. There is nothing restricted. Um, so at that point, that's when we educated them of what was inside the book. So I'm going to show you uh, the image that I saw and the image that I shared with the library board members. So this is, you can see, this is the book. It's entitled Gender Queer, and this was on display. And now I'm going to show you the image that I saw that was made it the whole, got the whole issue started for me, which was, if you can see this image here. Now you can see this is very sexually explicit material. And I'm talking, I saw children under the age of 10 walking past this display. Again, at any point in time, any one of these children could have picked up this book. Um, now, the library board members, I will say that they did mention, they did agree that it was inappropriate for a child. However, we asked for, and the library board president, but they, however, they, they, um, they would not agree to put any kind of placeholder or, I'm sorry, try to think of the correct word here, any restrictions or safeguards in place for children in the library. That's all we were asking. I want to make it very clear that this group in Wood County, we are not asking to ban books. We, all we are asking is for the books to have, you know, be in a restricted area away from children. Um, Jessica, it's that's same... pornographic material. Correct. Um, there's no doubt about it. That is allowed it. in our public libraries? That is allowed in our public libraries. Um, unfortunately, we have also found other sexually explicit books um, inside of the library along besides this one and also in Wood County Schools. Um, there is a challenge process where you can challenge the material. Once we realized that the library was not willing to put any safeguards in place for the children, um, I challenged the book uh, to Brian Race, the library director. Their policy is that he is the one specifically responsible for all the material in the library. And he let me know there was a challenge process if I had issues with the book. 
So I just challenge- illustrations. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Jessica, but uh, just going back to those illustrations, it looks like it is tailored for a child. So, so what is the age range that is described on the book for whom it's targeted? Um, well, if you look on the front of the book, it says teen readers and adult books. So it is questionable who the book, I mean, again, like you said, it's, it's a comic book. I mean, it looks, it's got cartoon illustrations. So to me that that's geared toward a child, towards a child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So I, so I challenged the book through their process once I realized they weren't going to do anything. And um, they, they stated um, in a letter back to me, they mailed me a letter and stated that they met their criteria. Um, actually, the book that I challenged was Let's Talk About It, which is a different book, but it was one of the other. It had sexually explicit material also. That's breathtaking. I've never seen anything. I could never dream of seeing something like that as a child in my public library. Um, now, Senator, I'm curious, how did you become involved with this issue? Why did you become involved with this issue? Well, I became involved uh, through Jessica um, and uh, a number of other friends who are part of the activist group here in Wood County that are spearheading this. And um, I had the exact same expression on my face as you had on yours, Layla. It's just uh, uh, just utter disbelief and it's outrageous and it, it doesn't, it, it makes you angry that children would have access to this kind of filth. And, the, and that's what it is, it's filth. And um, so uh, Jessica has been, she does what she did <laughs> with this book with, with you, Layla. She does at city council meetings, at, uh, at uh, candidate uh, meetings during election season. Um, she walks it around and shows everybody, this, that's what they're seeing. This is an outrage, this is disgusting. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I uh, introduced a bill that basically said, can't do that, can't put that in schools and public libraries. And th it has no place, um, in my opinion, not just in the kids section, but, uh, you know, can you imagine uh, Mr. Carnegie allowing that when he started his life? He didn't conceive any kind of garbage like this. This is flat um, indoctrination and perverting our young people. And it's an outrage. And uh, Jessica is is a warrior for this. But uh, I ran a bill last year, and it just uh, it hit a wall in uh, uh, the committee it was sent to. But uh, we're going to use a, a different tactic tact this year. But it basically just says the bill says, look, you can't have you can't have uh, books like these within twenty five hundred feet of a of a uh, public library and uh, school library. I think these are in school. Are they in public this, schools? This also? particular book I haven't found in Wood County Schools, but okay. however, we have other books. Um, there's a book called Let's Talk About It. It, it tells children how to use butt plugs. Um, it tells them how to properly masturbate. And it, and it gives graphic illustrations. We're not just talking, it's um, words. This is pictures. Um, it's also telling children, um, you know, you, about how to look at pornography, look up your favorite porn performers. Um, it's, it's just unbelievable. And that book was at Parkersburg South High School Library. I did challenge that book. Thankfully, the Parkersburg South High School, uh, you know, principal, she did remove it. However, she, she stated that she felt that it met, met the West Virginia Department of Education content and standards. And, and um, I asked for clarification on that. Could you please explain to me how that meets the content standards? And I was stonewalled. I didn't get any answers from the Board of Education, um, who I copied on the email or the principal. So, um, you know, there, everybody in this, I have, uh, and just like Azinger said, I have informed a lot of people. I'm talking the governor, the attorney general, members of the House, members of the Senate. I have informed, I have shown these pictures to our Wood County Sheriff, prosecuting attorney, police chief, city council, county commission. Uh, I've taken it around to the churches in this area. Um, Thankfully, Senator Azinger is one of the people who's willing to get in the fight and stand up for what's right. But unfortunately, even the ones that that agree that it's sickening will not stand up against this. And we are going to have to stand against this to protect our children. I mean, again, I, I am not asking for any book bans and I'm definitely not asking to attack any communities. The only thing I'm asking for is that we protect the children. We have a system in Hollywood that the left supports that 
as a rating system for movies. We agree, rated R, rated X movies, NC-17 movies, children cannot have access to because it's not appropriate. The library in our county has an internet policy that says children cannot look at these sexual images. Why, you tell me why a book is different. Why can they walk over the shelf and look at the exact same images and nobody does anything? And an instruction manual as to how to do it when you get home. Correct. It's, it's yeah. just pure grooming. Why, why else would you teach kids this? You're, you're grooming these kids to be part of the, uh, the whole homosexual movement and the LGBT movement. This is, this is sucking kids into that, and it's sucking them into pornography. And uh, that's where kids start. Anyone that's watched pornography, uh, you know, I remember seeing pornography the first time when I was 12 at a friend's house, and I would never have conceived of having seen it in a library, but... That's what this is doing. It's perverting these children, creating a desire in these boys for pornography and mm -hmm. to, to go in a, in a direction that's going to uh, tragically ch change their life in, in many, as, uh, in many uh, instances. So there's a couple of questions I have for you. So you said you introduced mm -hmm. a bill and it hit a wall. Why do you think it hit a wall? Well, it, I think part of... Part of it is it, it, it's kind of like the the CRT stuff, the, the critical race theory, critical uh, critical theory, of Marxist type of of uh, bills that that I've run and others have run. People don't people are like, what, what's this? You know, until a year or so, until maybe the last year, maybe two, people don't know what CRT is and what uh, critical theory is. And I think that that people are just kind of. Uh, in, in dis disbelief and think that this can't be real. And I think that we, look, we have a, a, a lot of rhinos that run committees that don't want to deal with this. And it's so, it is so exponentially crazier than anything we've ever dealt with. I mean, 20 years ago, 50 years ago, this, this is not even countenanced. This is at the the edges of the CD part of society. Not now, you know. Now it's on the bookshelves in in the libraries where even children can pass by. So um, we, we have some committee chairmen that I don't think want to deal with this. They don't deal with the with the controversial type of bills. Well, my other question to you, though, is as I had mentioned at the beginning of the segment, West Virginia Code sixty one eight eight a two makes it unlawful for adults to display obscene material to a minor. So mm -hmm. why isn't this existing law applied to this case? Well, I think Jessica could probably answer that better than I. She's, she's pushed uh, our lo local prosecutor. I've talked to him too, but, mm -hmm. but uh, you're, you. Right. So I went into the local prosecuting attorney's office and I was actually told by the attorney general, you need to speak with your prosecuting attorney after the, with the county prosecuting attorney after I showed him the pictures. And so we set up an appointment and we sh I took the books in and I showed them to Pat Lefebure, who is our county prosecuting attorney, and I showed him the state law that you know you were referencing. And he stated, well, there is a mention of artistic and literary value in the law. So if there's um, if they could deem it artistic or literary, then you know that's how they're getting around it, basically. That just doesn't make any sense just because it's in a drawing. Is that why they're um, calling it artistic license? Because yeah. it's so part my, of the story? Right. So my question to him, my follow-up question to him um, once he stated that was, so if I put a Playboy or a Hustler in the school, the, we know there's interviews. Playboy did interviews with you know sure. lots of people. And so, I mean, that could be literary <clears throat> value. So is that the next step that we put, you know, adult pornography in the schools? Because, I mean, if, if that's how you're interpreting the law, there's the justification to put that in the schools and in the public libraries. What was their answer? He wouldn't answer. I said, it, I said, what if I handed this to a child on the street? Would I get in trouble? You know, I mean, is this, would it apply to me? And he wouldn't answer that question either. Mm, okay. Well, do you feel that many parents are just unaware of what's happening right underneath their noses just because they're in complete disbelief? I mean, you've pretty much already said that. They're relying on enforcement of the existing law, potentially. But what would your advice be to parents as to how to better police what their own children are looking at when they go to the public library? 
Well, I think, you know, parents need to be on guard and aware that, that this stuff is happening. And I mean, unfortunately, you know, we have a media that likes to spin it and state that we're banning books. We don't believe in freedom of speech. Um, you know, we're just on a witch hunt, but that's not the case. I mean, this is just sexually explicit material. I, I challenge parents to go out and do the investigation. Look for yourself, do critical thinking. What, what's inside these books that, that's such an uproar? I mean, is, is this really an issue or is it much to do about nothing? Um, that would be my challenge to parents. Go out and take a hands-on approach and, and make sure that your children are safe. I'll say uh, Layla, also that I think a, a vast, even though uh, Jessica and, and uh, her friends have, have stood on street corners holding signs, uh, have, have uh, brought the attention uh, to a lot of people, including the, news, the local newspaper was on the front page, but I, I still think a vast majority of parents have not seen the picture you saw, or they would have, they would just be in, in an uproar. I mean, it, this is, this is just out, it's just outlandish. It's, it's just be, beyond the pale and is perverse and parents need to go to their school, call the school and just raise a fit. That's what we need to do. We need to have parents raise a fit like they're doing at these local school boards all across the country now. And parents are waking up, but parents need to get the book, look inside the book and raise a fit. That's what needs to be done. Yes. And call the county prosecuting attorney and ask him to enforce the law. I mean, it's clear this is in violation of that state law. Through our online research, we discovered that these texts are in other counties as well. Um, the library system's online catalog shows them in Cabell, Putnam, Wayne, and Mason counties. So it sounds like you have quite a fight on your hands, but do you feel that in the next few months, in the near future, that you're going to be able to make some inroads? And I'll, I'll ask you this question as well, Senator. Um, I mean, the only thing I feel like I can do... we as a group of concerned citizens at this point is to continue to raise awareness, um, you know, educate people where we can and um, just get them to actually look in the book, see what, what it is that we're talking about and understand how harmful this is for children and, uh, and, you know, educate them on the laws. And like Senator Azinger said, go to your board of education meetings, go to your city council, go to your county commission. I mean, you know, it's it's so important to be involved in local government. I, I can honestly say, unfortunately, in the past, I have not been involved, but I realize now how important all levels of government are. And I just ask every citizen, you know, do your due diligence and please get involved in this fight because we have to protect the children. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, it's a matter of, of just perseverance. And uh, Jessica uh, has shown that for sure. Um, and that's all it is with a bill at a legislature. It's a matter of perseverance. It's like the religious freedom bill that we just passed last session in uh, West Virginia. Well, the first time we ran it was in uh, 2015 after West Virginia became a Republican majority for the first time in 83 years. So mm -hmm. it failed in 2015 and all of a sudden in 2023, it passed just a piece of cake. So timing is a lot of things on these and, and it's just a matter of, of not quitting and uh, just keep keep uh, throwing the punches and keep getting the word out and letting people know what's in these books. And it, you know, people have a, a common sense of morality. It's written on our hearts by God. It's natural law. All you have to do is appeal to that for the most part. I mean, there's a lot of people that there are people that will say, hey, you know, you're banning books. Well, this is me speaking, not Jessica or anybody else. I'm for banning this book. I don't care. Uh, like I said, and I said this to Brian Rates, who's in charge of the libraries here, when I met with him. And there was a, when we met, we were in, a, in a, the main room upstairs, and he had just brought a picture of um, Andrew Carnegie, I think it was. That's the Car Carnegie, but a uh, big picture of him on the wall. And I pointed to him. I said, Do you think that Mr. Carne uh, Carnegie ever envisioned this kind of garbage in public and his uh, libraries? And uh, Mr. Rates, to his credit, said no. And uh, so it's our, our mission, and, and uh, I'm, I'm getting behind Jessica and her group to, uh, to eradicate this kind, of, this kind of garbage, and that's what it is. 
Well, I want to thank you both so much for joining us. Jessica Rowley, Senator Azinger, thank you both for your time. Thank, thank you. you.